Um, we're currently right now in a season, and, and I just really felt to bring a message about having grace to run the race that we're in. I know that this class has just run a race, and you're breaking the tape, coming through the finish line of, of this season, but how many have figured out in God that one breakthrough is not the end of a matter, it's actually a new beginning for another season, okay? And I think that all of us have probably experienced that. And just to help you understand and remind you where we are on the calendar right now is that on the Hebraic calendar, we are in those days right now going from Passover to Pentecost. When Jesus was crucified, he was crucified over the Passover weekend. Then he was raised from the dead after the third day. He walked among his disciples during those 40 days and actually was seen of them. He was seen by as many as 500 people at one time. Did you know that? He didn't just appear to his disciples in a closed room. It actually says there was one day, you read about it in 1 Corinthians 15, that he appeared to 500 people at one time. But you know, I think it's interesting that there was only 120 people gathered on the day of Pentecost. And it makes me wonder what happened to those other 300 or 280 people. What happened to the other 280 people? I mean, they just saw a guy crucified on a cross, a spear put in his side. They saw him taken down from the cross and put in a tomb. And then they saw him alive, and yet they couldn't hang out. They couldn't persist. They couldn't pursue a guy that has been raised from the dead. I don't know about you, but I don't want to see mighty signs, wonders, and miracles and then lose my passion along the way. I don't want to see God do things great in one season and just because we go through a season where maybe we don't see things the way we thought we should see them, that we lose heart or we lose faith. And so I think that God wants to release to us a grace to run the race, especially during the season between Pe uh, Passover and Pentecost. And of course, we'll talk about Pentecost, which is when the Holy Spirit was poured out. But we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. And um, we're going to read from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And it says this. It says, therefore, we also, we also, the collective we, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. You know who those witnesses are? They are the first century church. They are the martyrs. They are the reformers. They are the pioneers. They are those that have gone before us, that are in heaven already, but looking over, over the balcony of heaven. And when I, when I think about the great cloud of witnesses, you know, most of these people after the first century had no open re revelation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It really wasn't until a little over 100 years ago that we now have a full open revelation about being filled with the Holy Spirit and all the power that comes with it. And yet these men and women did great things for God. And I just can't help th thinking that they're staring over the balcony of heaven saying, if we would have only had what that church has that they have today, we could have done even greater things for God. Come on, we, we cannot afford to take lightly what has been entrusted to us and what has been given to us for this season. So we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. The scripture tells us they're watching. Not only is God watching, they're watching. And since they're watching, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, or another translation says cleverly entangles us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us run with patience this, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I'm going to preach a message about running but in all full disclosure, I don't run. I mean, I can run like a little bit. But you know, there is a scripture in Proverbs 28 verse 1 that says the wicked flee, the wicked run when no one's chasing them, okay? So that's my defense, okay? 
It's, it's scriptural, okay? <laughs> but, but I believe that we're in, a, in a, a very interesting season right now, and God is saying, listen, I want to give people grace to run the race. Because I believe that we're in some very interesting times. I challenge you to go back and read Hebrews chapter 12 sometime this week. Because it actually kind of gives you an overview of some times that I believe we're in right now. We're in some times when there's going to be some challenging things that happen in the earth. If you listen to the prophets and the prophetic voices that we respect, you recognize that we're in a season where things are being shaken. And we're in a season when God is stretching our faith. And he's not just pat patting us on the head and saying, bless your little heart. No, he's saying, it's time to rise up. It's time to believe what the word says. It's time to press into every promise that God has given to us and be the church, be the ecclesia that I have raised up in the earth. So, so in the midst of these times, you know, I was thinking about the fact that in the year 2000, I felt like the Lord said, there's coming a new shift in the church and a new reformation. This is really before we started talking about a reformation. And in the, second, in the first reformation, we know that's when Jesus came. The followers of God, those that were doing things the way that God had, had laid out through the death of Jesus, um, they were no longer Jews, they were Christians. There was a name change. In the second reformation, when Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the door of the Wittenberg church, he made this bold declaration. He said, the just shall live by faith. And it launched this whole new reformation out of the Catholic church. How many of you come from a Catholic background? Okay. Into the Protestant church. How many come from a Protestant background? How many are more like me? You come from an American heathen background. Okay. I had no Christianity at all. Okay. But... The Protestant church come, it was the new name of the new move. And the Protestant church comes from a word that means protest. They were protesting all the stuff that was wrong and that was corrupt in the first, the first uh, rena restoration church. So now we're in a third restoration and God's giving the church not really a new name, but a renewed name. And he's not just calling us the church, he's bringing us back to the Greek roots of understanding that we're the ecclesia. And the ecclesia is a governing body in the earth that we are not just called to come and to fellowship and to, and to sing wonderful songs and have amazing meetings, but we're called to go out and be the church everywhere we go. And so he's saying, you're going to have to learn to run your race. You're going to have to learn how to take on my grace in the midst of it, because if you don't, listen to what it says in, uh, in verse 12 and 13, is that he says, therefore, if you're running a race, it says, therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. So in, in uh, Hebrews 12, he's saying, listen, you're going to have to run a race. You're going to have to get filled up again with the Holy Spirit. Because then towards the end of the chapter, he starts talking about the day that I think we're living in right now. When he says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken until that which cannot be shaken remains. If you'll go to the next screen. Yeah, and it talks about... It, in, the, in the Passion Translation, it says that little phrase where the heavens and the earth shall shake. It actually says, once and for all, I will shake not only the systems of this world, but the unseen powers in the heavenly realms. If you want to know prophetically what season we're in right now, God is shaking things. He's shaking the unseen, he's shaking the systems of this world. And I think we're going to see some shaking in the month of May. I think we're going to see some shaking in the month of June. Don't be afraid. I just want to remind you, God said I'm up to something. Anything that you see happen, just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and know that God is up to something. 